Welcome everybody to my solo playthrough of Root, a game of Woodland Might and Rise by Letter Games. This is a game of conquest and warfare and territory control, in which each player takes control of one of the adorable factions, the cats, the mice, the raccoons and the birds. And you're going to conquer this area around here, spreading across each of your own unique victory goals to achieve 30 victory points. The game ends when the person reaches 30 victory points and the game is finished. So, straight away, there's a lot going on here. And to be honest with you, despite its cute and adorable appearance, Root is quite a complicated game. The core elements of Root are quite simple. The movements, the battling, who rules the clearing and so forth, and crafting, it's kind of simple. But each player, each faction, sorry, has a unique way of playing. For instance, my faction here, Marquise the Cat, crafts using wood, makes buildings, and has a lot of warriors on the battlefield. The Woodland, the Woodland Alliance has no warriors right now, but can spread sympathy tokens throughout the woods. These small tokens act as small sort of bombs that blow up in replace of their own bases and spread out with their own tokens. They also have unique abilities and skills, and there's a lot going on here. So first of all, let's go for the setup. Another board here, this nice sort of autumn view board up here, the logo root of the corner. The top set of white tiles up there are items that are available for crafting. Certain cards and abilities let you craft cards. All crafting cards do for most characters are provide you extra victory points. So, for instance, you might a card might say, for instance, this card here lets you to craft one of the little bag items for one victory point, and this one here lets you craft one of the anvils for two victory points and discard the card. So they are optional victory points to help you speed along this track at the bottom down here to get thirty points. Next up, you notice not only are there numbers, but there are also little colour-coded symbols next to each clearing. There are 12 clearings in total. The numbers here come from the pop expansion, the solo expansion, and these are just used for ordering the tokens about for the solo player. They'll say, move to the clearing of the highest number, highest priority or lowest priority and so forth. There are three types of clearings. There are the mouse clearings, the rabbit clearings, and the fox clearings you see there. These represent certain clearings of certain types. You have to spend matching cards, for instance, cards might match a certain clearing, the mouse one or the uh, rabbit one for instance. The bird symbol is like a wild symbol, they can match any clearing you want. These small tokens here, the grey ones, are four ruin tokens. These are only used when playing the Vagabond. These have extra items in them, so you can know them for now. The Vich track down here, going up to 30, and our little tokens on there, track our victory points. Now straight away you're going to notice I have a lot of orange cat-like tokens across the battlefield. This is because my faction starts with six cat tokens, in one corner clearing. A keep token, this means my base. It says here my faction board, only I can place pieces in the clearing of the keep token that is my home base. I also have a sawmill, a recruiter, and a workshop. This is because in the instruction you're supposed to place a one of, one of each of your buildings in a clearing of the keep and adjacent clearings if you can. The Woodland Alliance and the Solo Player Alliance doesn't actually have any starting setup at all. It has his own board down here, it's got his own tokens. See, he has base tokens here and sympathy tokens. So his way of playing is so different from mine. But how the Clockwork expansion works is he finds a really unique and varied way of playing against certain opponents. It emulates how that faction would perform. And we'll show, we'll show you that in a second when I play certain games. with a dice, of combat. So it's quite simple. How you move, you move from clearing to clearing, adjacent clearing. You rule a clearing. When it refers to a clearing you rule, you rule a clearing if you have the most pieces or tokens in there. So for instance, I rule all the clearings so far that my cats are in. If, for some reason, the enemy had more tokens than me in a certain clearing, they would rule that clearing. They would rule the clearing of the mouse clearing there. But enough on that for now. And lastly, uh, combat is quite simple. When you initiate combat with an opponent, you get your pieces together and you roll these two dice. Normally, the attacker takes the higher number, so I would take the 3, they would take the 0. I can only deal hits based on how many characters I have in that area, so I've only got one character, so I'd only deal a maximum of one hit. If I had 3 cats in there, I could do up to 3 hits. If I had 2 cats, if I roll the 3, I still only deal 2 hits. The enemy player deals 0. But, interestingly enough, the Woodland Alliance has a unique ability called Automated Ambush, in battle as a defender with an Alliance Warriors, you deal an extra hit. Now normally the, the human player faction will give you the higher number dice, they have a unique ability with dice, and the Vagabond can move in between woodland areas and take more items from the players and aid players, 
So there's a lot going on in this game right now. So I'm going to go through the gameplay. We're going to, I'm going to talk about what I'm doing as we're playing the game. So my, my ball's ready down here. So you have a little flavor text in the corner here. It just says, you've conquered the forest. Now you must build a kingdom worthy of your name. So I've conquered the forest. I'm going to hold my position in this forest. This forest is mine. Despite its cute colorly appearance, this is my land. I want to take it. The bark of the cat faction is this is their, this is their land. My two uh, abilities here, so the keep, only I can place pieces in the the keep token, which we discussed earlier. My second ability is field hospitals. Whenever any Marquis warriors, these are these tokens here, are removed, you may spend a card matching their clearing. So cards that match clearing, so like I said before, so say I lost a warrior in this sort of fox clearing here, I can spend a card to place his warriors, warriors back into the keep area if I wanted to. This is a slot here for your crafted items that can give you extra points. So I've also got a list of buildings here and we have three things here. Birdsong, Daylight and Evening. Think of these as like turn order. To phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3 as regular board game terms. So, for instance, I'll go through my playthrough in a second. So, as always, you draw a card and ready up. So, I've got another card here. So, not only does the Clockwork expansion have unique boards that represent the faction and emulate their gameplay as, as close as possible. Mm -hmm. We also get three difficulty cards that will adjust the difficulty. Uh, easy, challenging and nightmare. And also three little bonus cards that modify their gameplay slightly. I've just chosen the challenging one, the medium mode, just so you can uh, see this does. So this one here tells me I organize if I have two warriors and clearing instead of three. So it makes it a little bit tougher. So first of all, we draw three cards from the deck and ready to play. So let's look at the cards first. Let's analyze the cards for you. So let's hit this card. Let's hit this first card here. This is a fox card. It's a fox symbol here. Doesn't mean much so far, but sometimes you might have to spend a card matching a cleaving or a certain action might have to spend a card. So if I'm in a fox cleaving, I can spend a fox card. The symbol here is the crafting symbol. This symbol here tells me I need to at least rule one rabbit symbol cleaving to play this card. As long as I rule, it's one rabbit clearing, which I do, I rule one, two, uh, I rule two clearings, I can play this card, no problem. Travel gear, tells it here to spend this card, put it in the discard pile, to craft the boots and gain one point and discard. This one here is a mouse clearing card, nothing for that so far, but it says I need to roll two rabbit clearings to play this card, I gain three points from that one. This one here, tax collector, um, means I have to rule a clearing of one of each type, a mouse, fox or rabbit, and then in daylight, so in the sort of main phase, you may remove one of your warriors from the map to draw a card. So first of all, let's look at what I'm going to do. So let's go from my board, and so what I like about this game is the faction boards do explain how to play the game as you go through. So Birdsong, phase one. Place one board at each sawmill. I've only got one sawmill, so I place one wood here. If I have more sawmills that I crafted, I place more wood. I use wood to build things. Marquis wants to hold the. Marquis's main goal in the story is to hold down the forest and just build things and just pop up the forest of his own constructions. So, my first. It says here first, craft using workshops. So, different characters will craft using different method methods. One might craft using certain cards, or might craft using certain tokens. I craft using workshops. So. I need workshops in matching clearings to craft. So for instance, I could craft this card here. I've got a matching workshop, you say there, the fox token. I, I own, I rule the bunny clearings. I could play this card. So I'm gonna do that straight away. I'm gonna craft this card. So I couldn't do this one straight away because I don't have a workshop in a mouse clearing. But if, say if in my game I've got a workshop there, I craft that card next and gain three points, which is a pretty good start. So first of all, I'm gonna craft a spender card. I take the travel gear, I put it on my character's board, and I gain one point, so I've already got one point ahead of the Woodland Alliance. So, second, take up to three actions, plus one per bird card you spend. Like I said, bird cards, the blue ones, are wild cards, they count for different actions. So I can take up to three actions, I've had bird cards, I can take extra actions. So my actions are battle, march, recruit, build, and overwork, I can do three of these actions. Battle means initiate combat. Take off there, sorry. I can fire to enemy. I can't fire anyone here because there's no one there. March, make two moves. So I can move once, I can move again. Or I can move a chunk of characters from here to adjacent clearing. 
Recruit, once per turn, place one warrior, each recruiter. So the more recruiters have, these little things here, again, more warriors. Build, in a clearing you rule. Remember I said about ruling the clearings earlier. Place a building, spending its cost in wood, connected through any number of clearings you rule. So what that means is, if I want to place a building somewhere, any building tokens down here, I've got to first pay its cost in wood. You see, it starts off with one, then two, then three, three and four. So the more buildings I place, the more it's going to cost me. If you look under here, I gain points for the things I build. So building things is pretty handy for me to win the game. When it says using wood connected through a number of cleans you rule, it's basically the more summons I have, I'll have wood connected. As long as the wood's connected for a straight line, I can spend the wood. So I'm going to do that straight away. I'm going to spend the wood. And I think I'm going to build another sawmill. I'm going to go for the more wood I build, the more buildings I can make. So ultimately, that'll be better for me. So in a clearing you rule, I rule lots of clearings. So I'm going to place wood down here. So I'm going to place, yeah, I'm going to place wood down here. I'm going to have rabbit clearing. See there, I score victory points. So I'm on two straight away. Can't spend, can't any more buildings. Uh, next, I've got overwork. Spend a card to place one wood at a sawmill in a matching clearing. So I haven't got that to do that. I could do that, I suppose. I think I'm going to recruit. I'm going to place a one warrior each recruiter. That's one there. And I'm also going to march. I'm going to march a few of these out of here to spread out more. Let's march three of these over there. I've done three actions. So evening is the last part of the phase. It says draw a card plus one per that symbol showing. You'll see that symbol along these. Um, there, uh, somewhere. There it is. Look on the recruiter. Draw card symbols. The more I have them, the more cards I draw. Let's go down to five cards and pass the turn is over. So I've drawn a card and I've got the cobbler card. So this one here, I need to have it clearing. Start evening, may take a move. I don't need that right away, I can just wait for that. So how does the computer player take a turn? What they do is we reveal one of the cards off the deck. If the card is a crafting card, the AI player crafts the card regardless of what it is. It doesn't matter. What clearing they rule, it just they just craft it straight away and get but only gain one point for it. Now it says here part two, so part three is to revolt. If it's a bird card, do it daylight instead. It's a bird card, so I don't revolt just yet, so I'll wait a second. So it says public pity. If you don't revolt this turn, spread sympathy twice if you have four or fewer sympathetic clearings. A sympathetic clearing is any clearing saying one of these sympathy tokens. So to spread sympathy, I just place a token down adjacent to a token I already have. I haven't got any yet, so it doesn't even matter where it is. We'll just place this in the bottom one down here in the corner. I do this twice, so uh, Jason token. It's a f so it says here, if no such clearing exists, it's the token with the fewest enemy pieces. So it's fine to go this way. So we'll go there, and you see here as well, it gains one victory point for spreading a sympathy token. That's how they get their victory points. They spread sympathy and slowly take over the jungle, back to the, the woodland back from the Marquis to Cats. So I did get a bird card, so I do have to revolt now in daylight instead. So to revolt, remove, like I said, it's like a bomb. Remove all enemy PCs from the order synthetic clearing with the most enemy PCs. There's either one there. So it doesn't really matter which one it is. So it says revolt in any suit. We'll do this one down here. We'll do this one here. So that's gone. And they place a matching base token in that area. So they have one of these down here. This goes in the base. Now they're going to start recruiting more mice gradually over time, so they've already got a bit of a head start. So, now we go to the last part, so they have birds like us, birdsong, daylight and evening. Organise in each clean with a base and three or more warriors. Remove warriors and spread sympathy again, so they're going to spread sympathy really fast. Don't forget though, our card says here we organise if we have two warriors instead of three. There isn't any yet, so we're okay, but recruit, place a warrior in each clean with a base, they've got a warrior there. One victory point, the order card is discarded, and there it go, it's over. So back onto our turn. So like before, place one wood at each sawmill. But I've got two now, I've got two sawmills. I've got one up here, and I've got one down here. So I could craft. So I put craft, I've got two rabbit clearings, but I have no workshops in the rabbit areas. So building a workshop there could be next priority. So I'm going to take three actions. I think I'm going to, definitely going to build. I'm going to build another sawmill to gain more wood. So I'm place a sawmill token over here. I'm going to spend the wood connected there for cleans I rule over here. Gain two victory points this time, so up to four, pretty good. 
Uh, I am going to march. I'm going to make two moves. I'm going to march three of these down here, and then I'm going to march three of these over here. And then my last action, I think I'm going to have a battle. So they deal an extra hit um, when they're defending. So I'm going to go. Some cards will let you deal will let you deal extra hits. Some cards may say in battle, do an extra hit or when you move a certain token, score a point, so look after the cards in your hand as well, they're quite good to play with. Next, so roll two dice. So two and a one. So they do an extra hit, so that goes to two. It's two apiece. So move one of these, and I can move an enemy token. I'm going to move their building here. If you move an enemy token, not a warrior, you score a point. So I'm going to slow them down here. But I do lose two warriors, so took a bit of a battle there. Uh, that's the end of my go, so I'm just going to draw another card. What did I get? Stand deliver. So in bird song, so back to the start, I take a random card from a player, and that player scores one point. Not much use as a computer player, but still, they haven't got a hand of cards, so it make a difference. So the authors alliances go now. So let's take a top card of their deck. An ambush card, so it's a fox card. So, we've got a fox card here. There's no crafting, there's no crafting on the card at all. Let's skip that part. Revolt, remove all enemy pieces in a matching clearing. I haven't got a matching clearing with a simply token. I've got one in a bunny area and one in a mouse clearing, so it doesn't count. So instead, I didn't revolt, so I'm going to spread seven feet twice this turn. If I have four or fewer tokens. So, I spread seven feet twice. So, fewer tokens go first, so probably going to go here and then here because that's two tokens I score one two points for that alliance there we go so organize so I haven't got any uh, bases out so I can't do that can't recruit any uh, bases so we're okay we're gonna leave that there and that's there go over they're on three points I'm on five points so my go so like before place wood in each of my sawmills I'm gonna focus on a building strategy here so I've got quite a lot of wood I think I'm still going to go for the sawmills though, because the more wood I have, I can build a lot faster. So I'm going to build another sawmill. I'm going to spend one, two, three. I'll place a sawmill down here. There we go. Next up, so I score three points for that, sorry. So one, two, three. I'm on eight points so far, not too bad. I'm going to, let's see. You see, his little tokens. That's his bomb. I've got to be careful here because if he pulls a matching card, I might lose some of my warriors. So I'll be really careful what I do. Now, I can move the tokens if I wanted to. I have to discard a matching card. If I don't, they score one point. So be careful what I do here. So I think I'm going to I'll rule the clearing here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait this turn. I'm going to recruit another cat. And I'm going to spend a card to place wood in a matching clearing. Let's spend this card here to place a piece of wood in a matching fox clearing. So I'm going to put that so rabbit one, sorry, and put an extra wood there. So extra, next to the extra wood. So my go over it, so draw a card. Scouting party. Let's attack it in a battle. You're not affected by ambush cards, so make a difference. We can't play them anyway. So computers go now, so reveal their card, and they have a fox card of an anvil symbol. They will craft the anvil. We only get one point for it though, but it just makes it harder for us. So we have a fox clearing card again. So, revolt. So, we have to revolt in a fox cleaving. That means this cleaving down here explodes, the warrior's gone, and we place a base in there instead. There we go. Spread sympathy. So, place a token adjacent. Get on there, less people. They score a point. It goes there, not there, because there's less warriors in that area. Then we place a warrior in the keep token. And there go is over. So they've got five points, I've got eight points. So my go now, so place one wood at each sawmill. I've got four wood to spend. Now, three actions. I think I'm going to build some more. I could go over there and fight the Woodland Alliance, but I won't get my pieces down first. Um, so let's, we've got four wood spare. So we're going to build one more sawmill. So one, two, three for another sawmill down here. 
That scores a nice big four victory points. One, two, three, four. I'm going to spend one more wood to place a workshop uh, over here. I'm spending the wood. I gain two victory points. Oh, it's a 14. And one more wood again to place a recruiter up here. And then I'll be clearing. That'll help me recruit more characters. So that said, I don't know if all those build this turn. But I'm already halfway to victory already. It's a pretty good start. Three actions done. I draw a card. I'm still up to five cards. So I've got a knapsack here. Can craft again. That's my vote over. So I might lose some. I might lose some things here if I'm not careful with the uh, sympathy tokens. So they got a. So they got a fox clean again. So craft. No, they can't revolt because they're fox based already on the uh, playing field. We're going to spread sympathy only once though because we've got more than four. So adjacent clear enemies are probably be down here. They gain two points this time for that, so on seven points, all getting closer. Nothing else happens, so organize, place a warrior token in a clearing. So if he would have got a rabbit card then, he would have played on this one here, took out my mouse, my cat, sorry, or worse, this up here. Slow me right down. If he gets a rabbit card next on his turn, it's going to really hinder me up there. So, on to my go now. So, wood at each sawmill. One, two, three, four, five wood. Three actions. So, I'm thinking, what can I do? We'll craft again. We'll go for a battle instead. So, I'm thinking. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make two moves. I'm gonna move once and twice over here for a fight. I've got no cards I can really use in this battle at all. Bird song, no scouting party. That's fine. Let's attack. So two and one. Four to defend it. An extra hit. So two and two again. So I've lost two warriors. They've also lost two warriors. Warriors take priority. You always get rid of warriors first of the tokens, and after that they decide what token to go. So I could fight again, remove those tokens. I'm going to do that, I'm going to fight again. Still roll, so that was one and zero. So I score an extra hit for undefended. So that's them gone. Back on there it goes, back on there it goes. I gain two points for so two tokens removed. But the thing is that we can spread sympathy again now and gain more points again, so. But I'm going pretty close with 17 points. That's my go over. Uh, draw a card. There we go. And then I've got six cards. I've got a discard card. I've got a fox card. I've got a bird card here. Like a wild card. It's always good to have. So computers go now. Or computers. Uh, AIs go. They've got an ambush card with a crazy artwork on the front. A mouse card now. So no craft. But can I revolt? Revolt in a mouse clearing with a sympathy token with the most enemy PCs. That'll have to be just this one here. So he goes, and a mouse base is there instead. Play sympathy, two, we go there. They gain two points again, they're up to nine. They're not too far ahead, they're okay. Uh, recruit a mouse in a base, and there go, it's over. So my go now, so place wood at each sawmill. So one, two, three, I'm out of wood. I better craft something now, so I'm going to craft one more. Actually, I'm going to craft something else. I'm going to craft a workshop. Um, I can do that. I'm going to craft a workshop. Uh, let's see. Be careful of that. I'm going to craft it up here in the corner, actually. So I've got a fox workshop. There we go. And I score two points. That cost me uh, two wood. Do that way first, be easier. Or else can I craft? I've got two spaces down here, but that could blow up soon, and that could blow up soon as well. So be careful. Let's go for it. Let's craft. Um, let's craft a, a sawmill again. So one, two, three, four. That's five points this time. So I want to twenty-four points, and I'm going to craft a recruiter for two. And craft this over here. It's two. Two points, an extra card. It's on 26 points now. 
So that's my go over. I'll draw two cards, extra symbol, and scored down. Ooh, that was close. Could really Peter's go next go. Scored down this one here, two there, that's down to five. There we go. I've got four points left to win, so it should be in the bag unless something bad happens now. So flip it over. They get a point for the uh, crafting. They got one point for that. So they're on ten. Fox card, so they are gonna revolt. Oh no. <laughs> So a fox clearing, they've got one down here. That's going to kill that. It's a fox base. They've got two bases now instead. It's played sympathy. So there'll be fewer pieces probably this way. They score two points again. They're on 12. They'll place a mouse there and a mouse there. That is their go over. So they're on 12 points. My go now. Can I craft investments? I've got only one rabbit workshop. I can't do that just yet. So, first of all, place one at each sawmill. One, two, three, there, there, and there. If I just craft more things, I probably won this. So, let's go. Can I do this? I've got spare. I could craft one building there, and maybe one up there as well. So we're going to do and craft one building and craft a workshop down here. One, two, and three. That's three points. One, two, three. I'm 29 points now. I'm going to recruit. Place a warrior at each recruitment place. There. One there. One there. I'm going to... And lastly, I can't quite. I'm going to remove this token here. Let's roll just in case I get a zero. Yeah, that's fine. Remove that token. It's that gone. I've got a scar of card matching. Uh, I can. It's one of those. And that's my go over. All 29 points. It's very close. Draw two cards. I've got six. Let's so score one more. There we go. So computers go now. Oh, yeah, so I guess the computers AI. Oh no, rabbit clearing. No! <laughs> Mass revolt. No, it's blew up my token. Oh no, one, two. You've got two points for that. Oh no, it's slowed me down badly. No. And his base goes there. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. Show sympathy. Uh, that'll go there. He gains two points for that. Always oh, on 16. Um, get rid of this for sympathy again because there's two warriors. That'll go probably there. Oh, we've got three points for that. One, two, three, 19 points. Place a warrior each one. One, two, and three. Oh, it's getting close. My go. Can I craft anything at all? There. And there and there. I need to defeat this to rule the clearing, so I'm going to craft one thing to win. I'm going to fight, I'm going to battle up here. Yep, that's that removed. Spend a card, and a bird card, it's a wild card. Then I'm going to build just a re recruiter up there. The last bit of wood I've got up there. That'll perfectly put me into 30 and the game is over. And that's it for the playthrough of Roots. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I hope you find it quite informative and you want to play through it yourself. Um, there's many ways of playing Roots, many factions. The bird faction is interesting, using cards and placing Roots across the board. The Vagabond is really weird. It uses items and crafting and aids players and moves across the battlefield, just one token. The expansion packs with the uh, lizard folk and the beavers and so forth and the other birds, it's great. It's a great fun game. Um, it just requires a steep learning curve because there's so, so much going on at once. So many factions and abilities. Once you get your head around it though, the uh, factions, it becomes an extremely fun game to play. And the fun is learning the factions too. Mark is the cat's probably the easiest. It's quite powerful. But the other guys are great too. If you put us on nightmare mode, he probably would be a closer game. I mean, I'm on 30. He's on 19. He wasn't too far off for a medium difficulty. And that's it for this video. Any questions or comments about this game, let me know down below in the comments section. If you can like and subscribe, I appreciate that. And thank you for watching.